From an electric universe perspective, the irony is quite telling, since it shows the Einstein bandwagon careening off into a black hole of its own creation. Physorg.com says, For the first time, scientists have observed ripples in the fabric of space-time called gravitational waves, arriving at Earth from a cataclysmic event in the distant universe. This confirms a major prediction of Albert Einstein's 1915 general theory of relativity and opens an unprecedented new window to the cosmos. Once again, we see science journalists thirst for sensational headlines, with academics feeding a media frenzy. Some would call this more a theory of funding, not gravitational waves, but gravy waves. The more sensational the headlines, the more news media attention and funding potential. Unfortunately, as a result, the public can no longer distinguish science from its opposite, pseudoscience. There is no fearless investigative journalist to ask the awkward questions like, how in real terms does matter tell space and time how to curve? What does it mean to curve time when it has no physical dimension or direction? The word space simply signifies locations in three dimensions. So how can you weave a fabric of space-time out of non-physical concepts? The language is meaningless, used to impress rather than inform, and the scientists remain unaccountable to the taxpaying public. Some incredibly detailed claims are made to the effect that the signal originated in the last fraction of a second before the fusion of two black holes somewhere in the southern sky. It is said, based on computer modelling, that the black holes joined about 1.3 billion years ago and their mass was 29 and 36 times greater than the Sun. None of these claims can be substantiated. A mathematical computer model is not real evidence for those claims. It isn't science. The image of Einstein, the embodiment of genius, in front of a blackboard where he had just scrawled R sub I K equals zero, says it all. As Steve Crothers has noted, that simple expression says there is no matter outside the black hole. By its own definition, a black hole exists in an empty universe. No partner to orbit it, and no observer to witness it. The principle of superposition, that is, multiple bodies, in a flat Newtonian universe does not apply in the asymptotically flat space of the fictitious black hole universe. Decades ago I sat in a public meeting at the Australian Academy of Science to hear the well-known English physicist and science fiction writer Paul Davies, author of The Mind of God and God and the New Physics, drumming up support for government funding of the Australian Gravity Wave Telescope. Davies is a past winner of the lucrative Templeton Prize for bringing science and religion closer together. Scientists and the public don't seem to realise they were never separated. Big Bang cosmology amounts to archaic religious concepts disguised by wearing a mortarboard. I had the impudence to ask a question at the time, whether it wouldn't be a good idea if scientists understood gravity before they began spending hundreds of millions of dollars on a gravity wave telescope. The Englishman Davies arrogantly dismissed my question by suggesting that my question was typical of the colonial cringe. But after a billion dollars spent on the advanced version of the gravity wave telescope LIGO, the question appears to have been answered as I had anticipated. Einstein didn't understand gravity. What's more, it appears he didn't understand light either. At the Electric Universe 2015 conference, I presented the culmination of my research into gravity since the 1980s. My choice of title, The Long Path to Understanding Gravity, reflected the difficulty anyone faces attempting a paradigm shift. As the inspirational teacher Evan Camp said at an earlier Electric Universe conference, a journey in the wrong direction of one mile becomes a much harder journey of two miles to correct. The difficulty is, as the educational psychologist Dr. Harry Linden's research shows, when confronted with evidence that conflicts with your paradigm, the usual response is denial followed by accelerated forgetting. The heart of the issue here is that Einstein didn't explain gravity. As many scientists are beginning to acknowledge, a new paradigm is now required by the sheer force of discovery. Looking back on his life at age 70, Einstein gave a clear evaluation of what he believed were his accomplishments, and I quote, You can imagine that I look back on my life's work with calm satisfaction, but from nearby it looks quite different. There is not a single concept of which I am convinced that it will stand firm, and I feel uncertain whether I am in general on the right track. This confession, in a personal letter to Professor Solovine dated 28th of March 1949, was not made public until many years after Einstein's passing. 
But rather than inspire critical thinking, today's worship of Einstein creates an unresolved enigma. Two philosophically incompatible views of physics, quantum mechanics and relativity, standing side by side in scientific lectures as if such a horrific contradiction can be profitably overlooked. Einstein will continue to be proved right for another 100 years, because when all of the standards of physics, the observer and the observed, are relative and arbitrary, the theory is unfalsifiable. It's not science. Simplicity is the key to the electric universe. And perhaps a little humility wouldn't hurt either. Why not simply admit that we've hardly begun to solve the great mysteries of the universe and of our own real place in it?